intimidated against saying it. Because if you say it, they want to make you into a nutcase. Let's but, the truth, but the truth has to be, the truth has to come out. That's why I'm doing this interview. The fact of the matter happens to be that the whole war on terror is a fraud, it's a farce. The, yeah, there's a war going on in Iraq, because we invaded Iraq. And people over there fighting, you know. But the war on terror, it's a joke, you know. And until we discover what really happened on 9-11, and who was responsible for 9-11, because that's where the war on terror emanates from. That's where it comes from. It was 9-11 that allowed this war on terror to begin. And until we get to the bottom root of 9-11, the truth of 9-11, we'll never know about the war on terror. Aaron, you said that he was, and I think it's important, and I know this about the Rockefellers, from Dr. Dennis Cuddy and many others, who literally, you'll be 20 years old in a lunch line at college, and no, it was David Rockefeller. And he hears here, I mean, they're experts at recruiting and getting what they call players, and that clearly he was, I mean, I want to make it specific and just get you to reiterate what you said last night uh, about you were, you got 30% of the vote, you were having an effect, you, you, you made mad as hell, they knew that you'd started the Constitution Party, yeah. they knew that you were uh, somebody who was taking action and getting things done, you'd already made some big films, had a lot of other successes, right. so they were trying to recruit you and, and, and didn't it come down to the point of, hey, we are here to recruit you and don't worry, your chip's going to say, don't mess with us, you know, this guy's uh, don't touch. Yeah, uh, yes, that did happen. Now, I was definitely being recruited, but uh, it's more subtle than that. Well, your words. Just go through the process, and then, and then what do you say? Well, well, what it is is, I, we, remember, we were friends, and we used to have, he used to come to my house a lot, we'd have dinner, we'd talk, and he'd, he'd tell me about business investments that he'd get involved in, you know, or they would help me with this business investment or that business investment, and was I interested in joining the Council on Foreign Relations? You know, I would have to get a letter to join them, but was I interested in that? And, uh, you know, just uh, just stuff, you know, leading you on. And, and uh, I, I used to say to him that I never really did that because that wasn't where I was coming from. You know, as much as I like you, Nick, you know, your ways and my ways, were, the, we're on the opposite side of the fence. You know, I don't believe in enslaving people, you know, and... Um, and he would come back with, oh, I do? Or, well, it would be more like, you it's know... It's better for them. Well, it's more like, you know... Um, how do I put it? It was like... What do you care about them? What do you care about those people? What difference does it make to you? Take care of your own life. Do the best you can for you and your family. What do the rest of the people mean to you? They don't mean anything to you. They're just serfs. They're just people. You know, it was, it was just a lack of caring, you know, and that's just not who I was. It was, just, it was just sort of like cold, you know, it was just like cold, you know, and uh, I used to say to him, what, what's the point of all this? You have all the money in the world you need. You have all the power you need. What's the point? You know, what's the end goal? And he said the end goal is to get everybody chipped, to control the whole society. To have, the, to have the bankers, the, the elite people, you know, the bankers and some governor controlling the world. What, and, and, and I said, all, do all the people in the Council on Foreign Relations believe this way you do? He said, no, no, no. You know, it, it, most of them believe they're doing the right thing. A lot of them believe it's better, it's better off being socialistic. You know, we have to convince people that capitalism, that socialism is really capitalism. Because America's becoming a socialist country. It's a communist country today. And here we are years later after Aaron Russo points out that this is not a capitalist or free market country, but is really socialist. In fact, here's the cover of Newsweek. We are all socialists now. But this isn't the socialism the public thinks it is, where the government robs from the rich to give to the poor. Actually, it's always the big banks, the elites throughout history that fund socialism. They want to use the middle class's money uh, to basically domesticate the working class and expand the size of government so it can basically, in the end game, eradicate the middle class and have a giant submass of uneducated slaves who have no chance of ever rebelling against the tyranny and a tiny elite in control of it all. And that is the very nature of this new world order system. They are using big government to strangle competition, to uh, take control of the people, to break up the family to basically set up a global plantation or neo-feudalist state? Well, one of the things they told me was that um, he, brought, he was at the house one night and uh, 
And we talk, he would talk and he started laughing. He said, Aaron, what do you think women's liberation was about? And uh, I said, I, I had pretty conventional thinking about it at that point. I said, I think it's about women having the right to work, getting equal pay with men, just like they won the right to vote. You know? And he started to laugh. He said, you're an idiot. And I said, why am I an idiot? He said, you want, let me tell you what that was about. We, the Rockefellers, funded that. We funded women's lib, you know? And we're the ones who got all over the newspapers and television, the Rockefeller Foundation. He says, and you want to know why? He says, there were two primary reasons. And they were, one reason was, we couldn't tax half the population before women's lib. And the second reason was, now we get the kids in school at an early age. We can indoctrinate the kids how to think. So it breaks up their family. The, the kids start looking at the state as the family, as the school, as the officials, as their family, not as the parents teaching them. And so those are the two prim the primary reasons for women's lib, which, which I thought up to that point was a noble thing. You know, when I saw their intentions behind it, where they were coming from when they created it, the thought of it, I saw, I saw the evil behind what I thought was a noble adventure. You know? Aaron, did you know that Gloria Steinem, in one of her own books, now admits the CIA funded Miss Magazine? No, I had no idea about that. No, I never heard that. Yeah, we're gonna CIA funded Ms. Magazine? Funded Ms. Magazine with the stated goal of taxing women and breaking up the family. No kidding. I never heard that. Well, Nick told me. I mean, I mean, I know it, but not because I know the CIA was involved in it. Well, she, Gloria Steinem was proud of it. Oh, the CIA wanted to help me help women. No and kidding. So they funded it, yeah. And, and of course, it's divide and conquer. Right, and, of course. And what they do is they focus in, obviously, on real problems. Women were getting shafted in many ways. But the elite didn't, wasn't planning to help them. They were planning to really shaft them and take men away from them. Look at what they did with black families. You only had about 10% illegitimacy 50 years ago uh, in black communities. And now it's over 90%. And look at welfare. You were going to give me some money, but you can't have a man in the house. Right. And, and so that was further to degrade the family. Damn. Totally destroyed. Uh, and, and, and now illegitimacy is over 50% in the general population. Right. Well, see, the whole thing is, is these people control the money. So they make all the rules, you understand? And, and they put whatever rules they want into effect. And the truth is America has really become a socialist, communistic country. And nobody, everybody says it's a capitalist country. It's not a capitalist country. You know, how can it be capitalistic when you have a central bank? <laughs> That's the first, you can't, it can't be, you know? The it's money, a planned economy. It's a planned economy, it's, it's, it's a phony. If they want to create prosperity, they just print, Dollars, they just make dollars or put digits into the economy. And, they, and then now you have prosperity. You don't have real prosperity. You don't have real manufacturing. You just have, you just have money being injected in. It's an infusion of credit. Which only being, makes the government go into more debt. Into more debt. The Federal Reserve is poison to our country. Of course it is. It's poison. Whoever makes the money makes the rules. Rothschild said that. And they make the money. Why are we allowing these private bankers to make the money for our country? It makes no sense. Why are we paying interest to these banks to make money for us when the government can do it itself without paying interest and without all that debt? There's no answer to that question, and it's the question no politician will raise. Everybody talks about America's debt, how much debt we're in. We're in debt because we have to borrow money. But we don't have to borrow money. They designed it so we go into debt. Exactly. We can create the money and back it by gold so, you have, so they can't create too much of it so you don't have the inflation and then do what the founding fathers gave us. But instead, the bankers make the money, they control the government, they buy the politicians, they tell us who gets into office, you have computer voting, that's a fraud. They do whatever they want to do to us. They do whatever they want to do to us and it has to stop. My friendship with Nick Rockefeller was one where we, were, uh, we expressed ideas to each other and thoughts and philosophies, and he wanted me to become part of what they were doing and for me to become a member of the CFR and uh, offered various business opportunities for me to get involved in and for me to um, not take up the fight or the battle that I've been taking up in the past, you know, to drop that idea because what was the point of my fighting for the people? I was a guy who was very successful in the movie business, and I saw the truth of what was happening. I tried to express it to the people, and rather than having me express it to the people, they wanted me to join their side because I was a mover and a shaker, and rather than me opposing them, to join them. It was real simple. And uh, 
he tried to recruit me into that situation.